Um, first, I'd like to say I'm pleased to see Gareth Southgate. Uh, of course, I wish him well in, in the, with England. But of course, not when they play well against Wales at the Indian Park, that's a certainty. Uh, also, Gordon Banks. Where's Gordon? Where's he? One of the greatest ever, Gordon. Uh, do you remember mine getting uh, a few against him at, over the years at White Hart Lane? Remember that, Gordon? Yes. He picked it out a few times, mate, that ball. Headers as well. From corner kicks. Ooh. Anyway, uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, the distinguished guests. It gives me great pleasure to say a few words about Pelly this evening. There may be a number of people here tonight who have seen him play in the flesh and witnessed firsthand how he turned football into the beautiful game. Uh, unfortunately, of course, he's not here this evening, which is very sad. I suspect, however, I am one of the lucky few present tonight who shared a football pitch with a great man. Playing against him for Wales um, in the 1958 World Cup, we had progressed out of the group stages, uh, reaching the quarterfinals in our first, and unfortunately the last in this prestigious tournament, at the moment anyway. We were drawn against Brazil, who were seen as favourites to lift the Jews Remy Trophy. Jimmy Murphy, our manager, anybody remember him? Yes. Kick bollock and bags, yeah, remember him? So I'm going to say it. But he was, Jim. Uh, <clears throat> he had us well prepared um, and spoke at length at the qualities uh, of the players in the Brazilian team. The likes of uh, Bellini, Santos, Didi, and of course the legendary Gavincha. Up to this point, Pele had played a couple of games for Brazil and was only 17. His name was barely mentioned in the pre match team talk. When we kicked off, you can imagine our shock. As soon as he touched the ball, started beating players and testing our goalkeeper, Jack Kelsey, uh, we looked at each other and probably had the same thought. Who the hell is this? <laughs> Still, we give Brazil the hardest game of the tournament, losing narrowly 1-0. The goal, of course, scored by Pele. Uh, this match brought Pele onto the world stage and he thrived on it. Brazil won the semi-final beat France 5-2, with Pele scoring three and uh, beat the host Sweden in the final 5-2 and again with Pele scoring twice. A superstar was born and it was a privilege uh, looking back to witness it. I only wish I'd swapped shirts then. <laughs> I, sw I, sw I swapped shirts with his right back. You know? <laughs> As test me the difficult game we give Brazil, Wales were invited to Brazil for two friendly matches as preparation for the 1962 World Cup defence held in China. It was China, wasn't it? Chile, Chile. <laughs> you put China down. <laughs> Bloody good, isn't it? Should be careful what you do, Cliff. God. We've had it now when I get home. <laughs> China? <laughs> and my daughter's to blame as well, she's in it. I'm a grandson. <laughs> it was sensational. Now at 21, no, I'm, we lost, no, we lost both games. One in Sao Paulo, there was 80,000 there, and we got beat 3-1. Pele scored twice. And the other game was at the Maracana Stadium. There was 120,000 there. Unbelievable. And there we got beat 3-1 again. And Pele scored twice. He was sensational. Now at 21, he developed physically, mentally, and yet any other thing you can think of. Physically in particular, where he needed to be as uh, back then, believe me, skillful players were targeted off the ball. It was like that when I used to play against Leicester. Jesus, Leicester. <laughs> oh, God, the young guy I didn't play against now. And uh, you saw him sort of uh, virtually kicked from the tournament. Uh, imagine Pele playing today. Perfect pitches. Minimal tackling. 
and not the teapan and laser ball we used to play with. Did you ever see that teapan and laser ball? Of course, you would play with it. And uh, it was um, unbelievable, especially when the mud came as well. Uh, so he would have been, you know, sort of, in today's fault, he would have been unstoppable. Is Pelly the greatest player of all times? In my opinion, he is. Two-footed, great in the air, had pace, scored goals, and as brave as a lion. I mean, what more can one say? Is he what football should mean to everyone? He is what football should mean to everyone. He's a shining example of this beautiful game. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>